I, my big title is I'm an automation engineer uh, for Riot Games. So I guess that means a little bit of system administration, a little bit of programming, and a lot of chat. Um, so this is how to use Shell to install Chef, to use Ruby to configure your Mac. Um, is the resolution so best with you? Yeah, there you go. Do, uh, <laughs> it just keeps stealing. <laughs> You can match the desktop size. You can see if this helps you at all. Is that helpful at all? No. Sure. Let's see. Yeah. So if you back. Is that better? No. Yeah, of course. Um, so what we were talking about is how to use Chef Solo to drive Soloist to run Ruby recipes that will install and configure and um, yeah, change your Mac the way you want it. Uh, so what's Chef Solo and what is Soloist? Uh, Chef Solo is the local client that executes Chef recipes. It's completely server free. Uh, you can batch things up and hand it to Chef Solo without a concern for Chef Server. So you get all of the awesome that is Chef and none of the bad that is Chef Server. Um, Soloist is really nice because it takes all of the glue and configuration that you need to run Chef Solo and it puts it into a single YAML manifest. Um, and then it also uses Librarian Chef to gather your cookbook dependencies. So you get basically all the advantages, again, of Chef Server. You get uh, a collector for your cookbooks, so you don't have to store them, you don't have to find them, and you have a single point of location for configuration. Um, so we're going to see an example. So here's the Soloist RC, and basically all it does is it tells you these are the recipes that I want to run on my laptop or desktop. And they're fairly self-explanatory. Right? The first one installs Chrome, Dropbox, etc. Um, you can also set node attributes inside of the Solo SRC. And what that would do is, in this example, we're providing the versions of Ruby we want installed to RBN, and then we're going to set the the uh, default Ruby. So you could add 200p147, and the next time you run Soloist, it would build that for you. And if you wanted, you could set the default. Um, so then the shell file, the second component, this is what gathers your cookbook. So you see the first two, or the first three are dealing with a cookbook repository where several cookbooks live in a single repository. Um, and this, your Git path is the same, but the, the path will let you tell it, okay, this OSX based cookbook lives here. Um, the bottom two are when you have a single cookbook in a repository, that's kind of the, the best practice way, so you just have to say, look here. Here's its name. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what a recipe is. Uh, this is the heart of what Chef Solo is going to execute, and it's relatively straightforward. So you have recipes in an attribute file. They are named the same, and they pair up with each other. Um, so this one, for instance, installs Google Chrome. Um, it uses a DMG package provider. And then you, you send it some attributes, such as the name. Uh, that's what it mounts as. It's checksum so that when you download it, it doesn't give you something bad. And what you want to do, like an action is install. You could remove, um, if you had a service, you could start it. Like if you had Apache, you could set it to start. Um, and then you want to, the owner node is just a chunk. Um, and then you can see the attributes here. This removes the attributes out of the code that does the installation. And it makes it something that we can, again, configure in our node attributes. So if the checksum for the Google download changed and these guys were slow updating the recipe, you could just override it here, and then everything would work. Um, so let's install some software. I do not have Firefox installed or Evernote. So we're going to edit this solo SRC and we're going to add Firefox and Evernote. Uh, and then we're going to run it. And this is going to look hacky and I'll talk a little bit about the hack at the end of the presentation. Um, but we're going to run something that's a little, it's embedded deep. We're not actually running the gen that you think we are. Um, so this took about a minute back there. So it runs through Chef. Anything yellow is a change. Um, anything white is information. Uh, you'll see it's fairly idempotent. It's like it already knows that Firefox was downloaded. This is something kind of cool. I picked Evernote for this. If these guys like Java, if they need you to say OK, it's going to stop and prompt you. And we all know this is a more, so we're just going to quit out of that. And it sets this up. Do you think you're going to have to drag it? No, it does it for you. Then it closes the volume, it unmounts it. 
now it's done, and oh, it's let off the catch up. <laughs> Maybe searchlight instead of Alfred. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, you can find the file on your computer. Oh, yeah, wherever the file is. Yeah. So we were going to add more. But, so there's that. Um, not sure why Alfred's not catching up. But so there we installed Firefox with one line. Um, relatively straightforward. So. Let's see something not contrived um, that, that may be useful. So my soloist RC is here. So this will literally take my laptop from zero to the state that it's in. Um, like taskbar, thing on the left, or right. Um, <laughs> you know, this thing not transparent anymore. Does everything. Um, So, and then, so my workstation cookbook, this is stuff that's just like one off from me. So, for instance, SSH. So, I keep my private public key in Dropbox. And what this does, it will install Dropbox. It will copy them to the appropriate place, symlink them into Dropbox. And now I have, so anywhere I go that I run this, I have my SSH keys available. Um, same for like, I don't know if you're familiar with Homebrew. This is just a simple thing. Like, you just list what you want Homebrew to install, and it will install it when it runs. Um, so then the, the, the guts of all of this grossness is this bootstrap script. Um, just it. So it, it's a little weird. <coughs> when we start with a map, we don't have a really usable Ruby. And I want this to work in one, one go, so I don't want to have to install a Ruby for it to work. So what we do is we install Chef Omnibus, and that has a self-contained Ruby with all of its dependencies. And then because I, I reasoned myself into this that solo was, was kind of part of Chef, I just go ahead and put it in that embedded Ruby. Um, and then we can run and it, it downloads our soloist, our Chef file, kicks that off, and then the laptop builds. Um, is, that, is that public, that your repository? Yeah, everything, everything's public. Um, so resources, Pivotal Sprout, these are the guys that, that came up with a lot of these recipes that allow you just to add the one line of Firefox and everything work. Um, Soloist is, again, that gem that wraps everything up. Librarian Chef is how you get those cookbooks. Um, this is a blog post that the guy has explained like in really good detail everything that's going on and how you would do it if you wanted to. Um, that's the link for this presentation if you want to see it. Um, also, you can add me on Twitter if you have questions. Um, I would love to help you. And then there's, there's probably better ways of doing this. Kitchen Plan is a, it's like a wrapper over the soloist wrapper, so it's getting even easier <laughs> to just like single command entire things. Um, and then Boxin is, so this is all chef driven. Boxin is, is puppet driven, um, but it's made by GitHub, so it's probably the best thing that you could be doing in real life. Uh, oh, and then GIST deck, right? If you don't know, this has nothing to do with it, but check this out. It makes a GIST into slides. Yes. Good. Good. Uh, that's it. I know somebody who could use this. They have like 30 computers they got to set up for kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, I, it's, that's a cool. I have a question. With your setup, um, do you find that when you find when you look for chef recipes online, you're able to use them, or do you find they're just not applicable to you? Um, so I don't. So servers, we don't look online. Like the community stuff is garbage, um, but Pivotal, if they're they're Mac focused, um, and they do stringent review to the recipes. And if you're running the latest major minor revision of OS X, so like 10.8 X, you'll be fine. Um, like it, it probably won't work flawlessly without seven or on 10.7, but you can get it there. There's stuff that's focused on Chef Solo or is Chef Solo for Mac, yeah. and and it's it. These guys are. The, the, Piv the Pivotal guys actually wrote Chef Solo. No, they wrote Soloist. They wrote Soloist. Okay. Yeah. I knew they wrote one of them. One yeah. of them. So they wrote, they wrote that. The, it's, it's actually it's really solid. You don't have cookbook problems. I think um, I will occasionally, I, I tend to rebuild my laptop like every three or four months. I will occasionally get like one. Yes, I mean, okay. the robots are doing that. <laughs> um, I'll get one or two like gotchas, but then it's usually just an attribute to set. And 
back on the road. And then also, um, if you don't trust the community, it's not a trust thing. I just, I found using Chef Solo, I constantly feel like it's a huge hack because nothing I try to do actually works according to the documentation. <laughs> Is according to the Chef documentation. So Chef Solo is helps. That's well, no, that's, so that's, that's you're using like the community cookbooks for service for Linux, right? Uh, I, I kind of try to do anything. It just always, so are we using something called Nike Solo or something? Mm. Yeah, the, the, the community cookbooks in general are, are very problematic. So like for production stuff, what we do is we, if, it, if we see something that's nice and it's like, Okay, 90% there, we'll fork that and bring it in house and then just patch it up. Because um, the, the community members are trying to do back, backups like Ubuntu, Linux, detected its Mac, detected its CentOS. Um, and so they, they get comfortable to do the Chef Solo versus the full Chef. There should be no difference between those two. Chef Solo runs. Like <laughs> okay, they, they should appear to work exactly the same. There are differences under the hood. But no, they're, they're, they're referencing the exact same set of gems and code that's executing the resources, be it delivered by Chef Server or being run by Chef Solo. Okay. Chef Client is just Chef Solo that knows how to download cookbooks. Um, oh, sorry, I'll, just to answer one question about trustworthiness so, or, or ease. So one step even further abstracted, instead of having to do DMG stuff, if you use Cask from Homebrew, you can just, if there's a Cask for it, you can do a single line install. So Cask is, um, binary installs to homebrew. So if there's a DM, if it's not like a compiled source, someone make a cask and it will install the DMG. So it's, it's getting even easier. Uh, any more questions? Excellent.